the reason this sword's being crafted is to tie in with the customer's uh, family legend. So it had to be a, a 9th century sword capable of cutting a man in two and quality enough uh, to be known by low nobility. And the Gillian sword ticks all the boxes. Party time! Yeah. <laughs> this sword itself was found in uh, West Gilling in, in Yorkshire. Its basic form is typical Anglo-Saxon, uh, 9th century, but the detail itself uh, indicates it's, it's very high quality. So this is the, uh, the wooden master for the pommel that's come together. It's had its rough carving at the moment, uh, it needs, needs refined a little still. The next stage will be to apply some filler, a uh, two part fine filler uh, over the surface and then uh, get a little bit finer detail. It's a good medium to work in if, you know, if you miss a little bit of leather you can always just replace bits in um, it dries and sets in a fairly short time and it's, it's carvable. Uh, you can carve pretty much any detail in there and uh, yeah, it's, it's a simple way to do it. I like doing fine detail work and you know, high, higher end work where possible. So really this was an opportunity to realise a, a very exact reproduction of this, uh, this specific sword. These grip ring sections will be uh, cast in bronze and then uh, silver plated. There will be black wood, more likely bog oak sections in between that. And the pommel itself will be cast in iron, uh, silver plated completely, and then the uh, sections that require blackening here uh, should be stripped of the silver and then blackened. So uh, these parts should be off to the foundry very soon. and I am the Managing Director of Edinburgh Cast Metals. Our business is unique in the sense that we are the only uh, foundry in Scotland to be using the green sand moulding, which is a traditional way to make railings, plaques, sword pieces, engineering castings and various other castings, artwork and the like, customer on demand really. Me and Paul have worked on various sword handles, pommels, grips, He-Man swords, other swords which I'm not 100% sure what he does with them, and yeah, um, the difficulty in the sword that we're doing at the moment was getting the hollow centres for the round areas and the hollow centre for the cast iron pummel, where then problems are. Most foundries tried to modernise and now obviously most were traditionally cast iron but obviously most modern processes are now in steel. You'll see steel works here, there and everywhere for costs. It's easier to work with, you can weld it. You can do so much more with steel. So new builds are generally all steel and it's just mostly restoration and conservation, all these types of projects which we get involved in. There we go. We have, we have everything. Changed in the way I do this is the furnace would have been around the coal in here. Obviously, you can't do that. The smoke would be absolutely ridiculous. It would have been made with sand, people back in 1500 Bronze Age would have put in some type of furnace, like I say, with the coals, etc. They would have carried it with a ladle like that, with a pot like that, poured it like that, and every single thing would be the same. Apart from, again, at the end, they would be able to use a grinder. Use some type of sharp object to hack away at it to obviously get the gates away from it. So any old coin or anything you see, it would be made this way. Also, we can get a wee handle. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's Almost every single little bit of detail.
well. First thing I want to do is see how well that bronze blackens. Because the thing is, the bronze comes up with crisper detail than iron. Just a little smoother surface finish and a little crisper detail, so basically the quality of finish is better. The possible issue is, the original pommel was iron, and blackened iron and silver. And I really need that black black finish to contrast with the silver. The first test is to see how black and how durable the black is on that bronze finish. If I can get the same kind of deep black to contrast with the silver as I can with iron, then this bronze pommel is a slightly better quality to use. So this has taken the silver plated um, sections of the grip for the sword and uh, oxidising them and steel oxidised as uh, rusts basically so this is given a similar effect to the surface of silver so there's a solution that has been brushed in to the detail here and it will start to darken Blades arrived from um, Owen Bush. Uh, Owen Bush is uh, regarded as one of the best bladesmiths in the country, and uh, I was really delighted that he uh, was happy to take on uh, the work on making the blade itself. The core of the blade is Damascus steel. That's folded, uh, folded steel that produces, uh, you know, something like this. Um, you have different layers of iron, iron and steel, uh, creating, you know, multi-layer. It composite in itself. It's, it's beautiful to look at, um, but it's very functional. And it was the way in which they um, would spread the impurities, if you like, um, of, of less pure steel and iron originally, uh, and it could ensure that you were gaining as much cleaner quality overall uh, through the core of the blade. Uh, there's very few sword smiths that are making to that level and that quality today. So all the hilt work will be done here, the armories, and then we'll, uh, we'll marry them up. So all that remains at the moment is this tang has to be extended for the pommel uh, and then the individual uh, pieces crafted in bog oak. So it's going to be a little bit challenging just to get everything absolutely, it has to be millimetric precision really so it all fits absolutely perfectly mm -hmm. but it's going to be worth spending the time on doing that right. A anything out in that form would be quite obvious if you looked at it. It just has to look as though there's no effort being involved in it, it's just the natural form. I need to go up to visit my knife maker friend Chris Grant, who's up near our broth, who has a little forge and is quite excited about the idea of forging this guard out of raw iron. This is pretty much a, a sort of test guard. I mean this one fits, it does the job, it looks okay. Um, but just to get that, that, that form right. Terminals of it either side, it, it swells slightly, so it's slightly thicker there. And that's just a little detail I'd like to get right. Uh, well, the bog oak has, has been collected up in the highlands where we procured some recently. We haven't got a date on this yet, but we reckon it's probably about 5,000 uh, years old and um, it's been stabilised as well. So it's been completely um, dried out, all moisture content removed and that replaced with the resin. So it's, it's partly resonated, which means it, it cannot crack or shrink um, after working. So it's very stable and it, it's very easy to work as well. So it's really nice, really nice to work. I'll, I'll pin the individual sections together so the grip's solid as one really. Um, and then I'll just need to finish off the actual assembly method. Extend the tang so it's passing through the pommel and uh, finish a, a, a compression screw system at the top here that's going to be hidden over.
the Gallon Sword Guard being stock removed from wrought iron. The original pieces and terminals here were just slightly thicker than the main body. It was, it was important to get that, uh, that far back. Need to prepare a wee bit of alloyite, which is a two part resin mixture. But it's good stuff for a permanent fixture. So the aim is to replicate the sword really as it would have been originally um, and that means replicating some of the asymmetry in some of the components. The pommel is in theory a symmetrical form but due to the uh, nature of it being handcrafted so and originally it is slightly asymmetrical so in order to sort of, uh, do justice to the original um, it's been necessary to replicate the complete form as asymmetrical as the original is. Blade fits into the recesses of the guard as well, which have been carved out so that it's effectively airtight, there's no daylight showing no gaps. Which is good. Everything's marked on a sword to fit a particular way round as well. This is quite traditional. Usually there's just slight inconsistencies or you know irregularities that will make a piece fit one way but not necessarily <laughs> the other way around. So you do find this on original sword fittings as well, little cross marks and so on to indicate which way something sits. Tight fit and it's always a, it's always been a Interesting fitting this grip on because it's so tight fitting. Because this is a very sharp blade. <laughs> so you can't apply too much pressure and squeezing that blade and you will cut yourself. room in this pommel, you see at this stage, for it to uh, sort of roll one way or the other just to get the right angle on the pommel, which is fine, that's exactly what I wanted it to be like. This is also quite a bit more involved, uh, <laughs> five separate carved sections and then your bogle carved sections and yeah, there's a lot, a lot of alignment and such going on there. Um, so yeah, that, that was all new, but it, it's a great challenge. That's what I saw when I looked at it. Was oh yeah, this is there's a lot to this, and it's going to be a, a great challenge to, to make it and make it right. So that that that's what appealed really. Definite sense of challenge. Something new. develop yourself in any craft you, you always have to be open to something new working with new materials or certain methods or techniques and that's the only way you develop and generally new techniques like that lead to new projects and, and such as well I'll get cut to within about a millimetre of the top and then pinned over, hammered over Let's see what we're doing FS. Several companies have uh, attempted reproductions of this sword. From what I've seen, no maker has fully got everything, every element of it, as it was originally. There we are. Sword. Uh, this, I believe, is, is probably the first attempt to really replicate every detail as it was. 
and this is what really drew me to, to make the sword as well. Uh, to look at it in ex excavated condition, it's really still stunning but a shadow of what it once would have looked like. Uh, so to really bring it back to life uh, is quite an exciting project. Mm. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time this sword has been completely brought to life. Yeah. In exact dimensions, same materials, same pattern weld in the blade, and fit in this few thousand year ball rope in the grip. That's a bit special too. It, it was one that I, I remember first seeing the picture of it, I mean just in its current state and just realising how much of a gem of a sword it was and think, you know, it was like, oh, I just fell in love with it straight away, I thought it's gorgeous, you know, and, and yeah, it was almost like a sort of, oh, dream sword to make, you know, <laughs> and there she is. How long is that, what's that, nine months is it? <laughs>